Hello there, today we'll be taking a look at this. As you can see, this is a AMD Athlon based motherboard and CPU set and actually has some memory installed as well. And if we look over here, you can see I got this for 500 yen at a store at Akihabara, the local electronics district in Tokyo. And since these kind of things really don't show up so often in stores, I figured this was my only chance to get this. So I actually got this about a few months ago, and ever since then I've been accumulating parts. As you can see, this has like an AGP port, so I've been getting video cards with AGP, including the one I got a couple weeks ago, which was a NVIDIA GeForce 256 DDR, the first generation GeForce card ever out there. And in fact, the first consumer GPU on the market. So what I'm hoping to do is to create a machine of this era once again. So maybe late 1990s, early 2000s parts and make a full system out of it. And the first piece to that puzzle will be this motherboard. So let's actually take a closer look at this. But before that, I know that there's going to be some dust in here and it was kind of dirty. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some canned air and blow that away first. All right, so I tried cleaning this up with some canned air, but the canned air didn't work really well because the dust on this thing seems to be like I probably got moist and really, really got stuck on there. So I just did the best I could and I'm just going to leave it at that for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this board a little more closely. So first of all, we have the Athlon processor up here. So let me turn that over. So this is a slot A processor. The CPU is in a cartridge type format that you would take in and out like this. At the time, this kind of package for a processor was pretty popular because Intel moved to this kind of slotted processor with their Pentium 2. The real reason behind it was that basically when we look at the circuit board that's actually in here, we'll see that it is a CPU in the middle with a couple of cache memory chips, L2 cache memory chips sitting right next to each other. So back in the day, they couldn't fit a large L2 cache onto the CPU die itself. So that's the reason up to like the Pentium, CPUs were like in this, you know, regular old socket format. But for a while, they went on to this cartridge format so that they could get enough L2 cache that the CPU of the day needed. So this CPU is the AMD K7, which is the code name for the Athlon, 800 megahertz processor. And as you can see, there's like a huge heatsink behind it with this little tiny fan. Aside from that, you can see the capacitors and voltage regulators for the CPU, because this is fairly common to see back then. All right, so let's look at what else we can take a look at. Uh, let's look at some of the slots. So over here, we have an ISA slot, five PCIs, and an AGP slot over here. I think it stood for accelerated graphics port. So back then, I guess you had like a higher bandwidth connection to the system bus when you could connect through the AGP. And also, it probably had some features that allowed you to share the memory over here with the graphics card and stuff so they can write to it quickly or whatever like that. And also, there's a little slot over here. I'm going to guess this is the, the AMR slot, which I think was where you would connect win modems and such. Basically like a stripped down modem, which needed to use the CPU's processing power to do modem communications and things. You really don't see these so often, and I've never actually used one of these, so I'm not, I'm not very knowledgeable in how this works. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some other parts of the motherboard. Oh, by the way. So this motherboard is an A-Open AK-72. And on this side, we can see there's a floppy cable along with a couple of IDE ports. And it does accept the ATX style power input. And there's three slots for I believe PC-133 SD RAM. That's single data rate, not dual data rate. Right now there's three 256 megabyte DIMMs installed for a total of 768 megabytes. So around this time there were th some problems with capacitors. I guess uh, um, faulty electrolyte or something and they led to a lot of capacitors that just bulge up and explode and stuff. But I believe this board was built before that whole fiasco. So yeah, I looked through it doesn't look like any of the capacitors are bulging or anything, so I was lucky there. All right, so we have our chipset over here. It's a VIA VT82C686A. I'm going to suspect there's probably like a more common name for that, but that's obviously the chipset. So back then, they used to be usually separated between the North Bridge and South Bridge, 
And now to think of it, just taking a peek over by the CPU over there, right under there, you can see a green heatsink on some kind of chip. I'm gonna guess that's gonna be the North Bridge, and this is probably gonna be the South Bridge. So the difference between the North Bridge and South Bridge is that the North Bridge handles features that are uh, much more bandwidth intensive, like I believe these ports over here, memory and such, and the connection between the CPU. While the South Bridge is generally for the peripherals like USB, IDE, and other kind of, you know, slower interfaces. So I'm just going to guess that this is a South Bridge because that doesn't sound like a model number for any of the North Bridges of the time. And below that we have a Award BIOS and a CMOS battery kind of thing. It's a 3 volt lithium battery and it's actually made by Maxell made in Japan. And guess what? I just happen to have a Maxell made in Japan lithium battery that I can replace it with. So kind of funny. We're going to go ahead and probably replace this piece of battery from over 15 years ago with a newer one that we have over here. And luckily it doesn't seem like it's been leaking or anything, so before it does any bad things, it's going to go ahead and replace it. Alright, so let's go ahead and remove this lithium battery. So I do have this replacement over here, which is probably the same exact model, although it has an H at the end, so maybe it's a little bit different, but it's a 3 volt Maxell lithium battery made by... Hitachi, and it's one of those rare items that's still made in Japan. So let's go ahead and remove what we have over here, like that, and here it is. I don't know if you can see it well, but that's the original Maxell CR2032 lithium battery made by Hitachi in Japan. And we'll replace it with this new Maxell battery made in Japan as well. There it goes. I'm kind of curious how much charge this thing holds, so I'm going to go ahead and use a multimeter to check that. So I'm not sure how old this battery is, but it's probably from 1999 or 2000 is my guess. Wow, it's literally like, like 20 millivolts or something. Holy crap, that's really low. <laughs> 12 millivolts, 15. Yeah, it's... It's completely lost its charge. Okay, so I found this little interesting jumper setting on this motherboard. Right over here there's a jumper called JP21, for which there's a little legend of how to set it. So interestingly, there's a K7 host clock, so that's the motherboard clock speed, which usually is called a front side bust. You can s switch it between 110 to 115 megahertz by putting it on the 1 to 2 position while you can also go up to 120, 147 by setting it to the 2 3 position. So I guess that there's going to be some overclocking capabilities with this motherboard. Also, a little interesting piece up here. There's a couple of headers over here that say modem in and CD in. So that suggested to me that there's probably an integrated sound on this motherboard, and that can be verified by, as you can see, there is the sound inputs and outputs right over here. Alright, so today we took a look at this Athlon-based motherboard, the AOPEN AK72, and we found some pretty interesting things from what you would have seen in computers back in the early 2000s. So in a future video, we'll be taking a look at other components that could be used with this motherboard to make a computer from this era. Thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see a continuation of this video and other kind of videos I'm doing, please go ahead and subscribe and click on that little notification bell button so that you know when I upload new videos. And if you have any comments, please leave them down in the comments section. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.